Bakatov Yerushalayim. Good morning, my brothers and sisters from the Holy City of Yerushalayim, Mount Everest of the Jewish life. It's a very humbling experience to be asked to speak about Medina Yisrael and Eretz Yisrael. It's the kind of thing which I would just like to say no, but I can't say. I have to say yes. Eretz Yisrael, as it is today, is 600 kilometers long. At the widest point, it's about 200 wide and 6,000 years deep. And how in five minutes can someone speak about the sanctity of Eretz HaKodesh? Now, people who are invited to speak have different viewpoints because you can speak all day about the Holy Land and the Kedushah. But I have a certain way, the way I see, thing about Eretz Yisrael today. Medina Yisrael. In the 3,000 years since we came out of Mitzrayim, and these Jewish people left with a, multi, with a mixed multitude, many people have come and mixed within the Jewish people of uh, questionable uh, genealogy. Let's put it that way. And we're living today in the time of winnowing out the people who are really not authentic Jews. Give me an example. Let's you have a huge heap of metal shearings and a lot of wood, very large. And you're asked to take out only the metal, but they're so large you can spend your whole life doing it. There are three ways that you can take it out, divide the wood from the metal. Number one is wind, because the wood is lighter. Number two is fire, the wood, the wood, the wood burns. And number three is a magnet. Kodibohu, in our time, is taking out people that he wants and bringing them to Eretz Yisrael. Some people go out from the Jewish people by the wind. That's called assimilation. Other people, unfortunately, go out with fire. The third way is the magnet. The magnet draws the metal out. Eretz Yisrael is a magnet for the authentic Jewish neshama. If you feel it, you it. If you don't feel it, then you've got a problem. To try to convince someone to come to Eretz Israel is like trying to convince someone to honor your father and your mother. Either you have it or you don't have it. We've come here, my wife and I, 60 years ago. The world changed. Eretz Israel was the third world country. Nothing to speak about. And now today it's the leading country in almost every field in the world. There's a brach of the Kodesh Baruch here. <coughs> I remember being in America, I had the feeling I was always on the periphery of society. I was never felt that it's my country and it's I'm a citizen. No, I was always look over my shoulder, who was looking at me. You have to sit in the train, don't talk in a loud voice. You come to Eretz Israel, all of a sudden, it's yours. You're not in the periphery. Your part, you're a son and a daughter of the land of Eretz Israel, which in this week's parsha, Hashem promised it to the Jewish people. So I just want to say that, uh, first of all, I want to say Yishakoach to the organization, bring them home, or that I would say, don't bring them home, come home. I, I, can't, I cannot forget the moment I stepped down from the plane, I bent down, and I kissed the soil of Eretz Israel one of the greatest moments in my life. Another moment, a great moment in my life was when I put on the uniform of the soldier of Tzahal. And I was dressed, I served in the army for 22 years in reserves, actually in the Air Force. It's something else that opens up your neshama, opens your soul, you've come home. The air that you breathe is the air Armavina breathed. The place that you walk, princes and prophets walk. It depends what kind of a person you are. Coming to Eretz Israel is not a measure of the country, it's a measure of who you are. Where do you want to be? On the right side of history, or on the wrong side of history? For 2,000 years, there was anger of the Kodibur, Am Israel. Anger is over. And Hashem is like bending backwards, as it would be, to do what's good for the Jewish people. See where we are. Remember, I once read that there was a census taken in the countries. Which people are happy? And Eretz Yisrael, the people there came out, be almost on the top, are people who are happy and satisfied 
despite all the problems and tensions which we live with, because that's what it is, because that's what a Jew is. Hashem told Abraham Avinu this week's Pasha to go to the land that he will show you, Eretz Israel. That time, Europe was an empty continent. There was no anti-Semitism there. He could have gone there and made a Jewish state. But Hashem brought him to the most crowded place in the world, the Eretz Canaan. Three Gentile nations, or ten Gentile nations in this country, because the idea of a Jew was to challenge the world, not to be with the flow. Anyway, whatever it is, if you love yourself, if you love your children, if you love life, and here's a place to come. Don't worry about panasa. Hashem will give you panasa. He can do it. If he did in the chutzos, he can do it here. And all the other things. Uh, but again, I go back to the point. I think that it's not really meant for everybody. You have to be a certain kind of a neshama, be able to want to come here and to do it. From my experience, there's only one thing difficult about coming here. That was the moment of decision. Once you make it, Hashem helps you. I see that again and again coming all over. Once you make the decision, everything falls into place. And now, okay, my dear friends, brothers and sisters, if you want to come, the country is open. How long this window of opportunity will remain open in history? Nobody knows, but Hashem has the timetable and he follows his timetable exactly. Now there's the window is open. Now the time to come. Wachem the shalom. Shalom.